This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at a modeling technique known as lofting. It works like a curved extrusion and is ideal for creating anything from a garden hose to an electrical cord. The loft works by taking a flat shape and pushing it along a path. Kind of like the way a roller coaster travels along its track at an amusement park. Let's look at a file real quick to make better sense of that idea. This is a scene named Lofting that can be found in the Working Files folder. The object was created by pushing a flat two-dimensional shape along a curved line. That line being referred to as a path when used to loft. If we select the object and delete it, we can see the two original shapes that were used to create the surface. The green shape, a circle, when lofting is referred to as a shape. The yellow line, which was created using the helix command, as just mentioned, is referred to as a loft's path. So where many of Max's modeling commands require the use of just a single shape in order to be performed, the loft, on the other hand, requires two. A shape that travels along a track, and a path which represents the track itself. Let's see if we can't make something like this for ourselves. In the top view, I'll create a helix. You'll find the command in the shapes on the right-hand column, fifth one down. Go ahead and draw it out from the center of the top view. Now there's several mouse clicks involved to get it on the screen. Go ahead and complete that, then move to the modify column. So we all look the same, we'll simply type in our values. For radius 1, let's give it a value of 50. Radius 2, we'll make 10. For the height, let's take that to 100. And for the number of turns, let's tally that up at 3. Once you've done that, activate one of your windows, then we'll center things up using the Control shift z shortcut. This helix will represent the path on which our shape will travel. Let's now activate the front view and we'll draw that shape. Back in the Command Panel, activate the Circle command, then make that shape down at the bottom right-hand side of the helix. Once we've done that, let's activate the Modify column, changing the radius on the circle to 10. I'm going to then change my wireframe color on my circle to a bright green. Not a necessary step, but if you'd like to do that, go ahead. Okay, let's go ahead and perform our loft. My suggestion would be to get in the habit of always picking the path, the track, first until you get a better handle on the command. That'll just make things a little easier for you to keep straight. In that approach, be aware though that you can actually select either the path or the shape first. The important thing to know is that the second thing you pick always goes over to the first. So by selecting the path first, the shape, the circle in this case, will move over and align itself to the location of the path. If you instead selected the shape first, the path would move over to and in line with the shape. With the helix path selected, I'll go back to the crate column getting into geometry. Under the standard primitives button, head down to compound objects. You'll find the loft command in the left hand column, fifth button down. Go ahead and click that. At this point, you've pretty much met the end of the road. From here, you're either going to have to go left or right, and if you don't go the right direction, things are going to get all messed up. A couple inches down below loft, you'll see the creation method tab. Under that, you'll find two buttons, get path and get shape. See, the nice thing about always selecting the path first is you avoid a lot of confusion at this point. You've already got the path, so the button you're going to want to choose is Get Shape. With that button down, now go into any of your views. In this case, I'd select the front view and carefully click on the green circle. Remember, that's the one identified as the shape. Once done, the loft has been completed. Let's get out of the Get Shape command, taking the perspective view full screen. To be able to see the actual geometry inside the loft, let's turn on Shaded Edges. That's the F4 command. Heading over to the Modify column, we can now make a few adjustments. Now, lofts, by their very nature, are fairly heavy geometry. You can adjust the number of lines in your loft by heading down to the skin parameters. Let's open that up. The two big controls here are the spinners for shape steps and path steps. Path steps determine the number of lines or edges that run from the front to the back of the path and in large part determine the overall smoothness of your lofted surface. Let's take our path steps number up to around 15. Shape steps, the control directly above that, control the number of lines not from front to back but going around. This in essence, with the circle being our lofted shape, controlling the smoothness of that circle. You can see what happens if you take your path steps down too low. I'm going to return that value back to 5. Farther up in the commands under creation method, look directly below the Get Shape button. You'll see the option that's turned on is Instance. 
And this option comes in especially handy when the shape that's been lofted around the path is either too big or too small. Watch this. I'm going to open up the Select by Name list by typing H. I'll then go back and select the original circle shape. In the Modify column, I'll now lower the radius and look what that does going back to the loft. Changing the size on the original circle transfers back to changing the size of the shape on the loft. Let's go ahead now and delete the lofted surface. Notice in doing so that the original shape and the original path remain behind. Let's see what happens if we would use a nested shape along the path. Let's return back to our front view being full screen. To zoom closer in to the location of our circle, we'll select that, then tap Z. OK, let's now make a star shape. Because of our intentions to nest a shape inside our star, let's now move to the right hand side and turn off the Start New Shape button. For that, don't click on the button, uncheck the check mark. This will give us an opportunity not to create a new shape this time around, but actually add this shape into the star. Let's now create a circle inside the star. Once you've done that, go ahead and right click away a couple times, then deselect. If done correctly, when you reselect, both of the lines auto light up. This is a strong indication that what we have now is one shape that consists of two splines. That circle being nested inside the star. Let's take things back now to four views. After doing so, we'll deselect our shape. OK, before we perform our loft, let's go back and take our perspective view full screen. Now remember, with the loft command, you can start by selecting either the path or the shape. I personally always select the path first to avoid any confusion. Back in the Geometry column, under Compound Objects, let's again perform the loft. With my path selected, and now having to choose between either the Get Path or Get Shape buttons, I'll simply click on Get Shape. Now, what's the shape in my scene? Well, that's easy. That's the star with the nested circle on the inside. Let's go ahead and carefully now click that. Once we've done that, let's head over to the Modify column. Then turn off, using F4, our shaded edges. Take a look at that. We've now got the star being lofted around the helix, but with a nested hole going all the way through from front to back. Go ahead and orbit around the object so you can see that. What makes the loft command even more powerful is that you can even alter the shape in a couple of different ways as it travels along the path. Watch this. Head on down to the bottom section in the Modify column. It's named Deformations. These controls allow you to alter the loft in several different ways. For our example, go ahead and click on the Twist button. The Twist dialog allows you to control whether or not the nested star spins at all as it travels from the front to the back of the path. Notice on the left hand side the value 0. To the right of that, that red line goes straight across from there, indicating that right now, the nested star is not turning at all. Along the red line, click on the heavy black dot on the right hand side. To determine how far the star twists as it gets to the back of the path, go ahead now and drag that directly down, out of the dialog, and to the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and minimize that for a moment so you can see what's been done. The nested star is now twisting from the bottom of the helix as it travels toward the top. Now I'd like that twist to be a little bit more prominent, let's go ahead and reopen the twist dialog. In the dialog box, down at the center bottom, you'll see two values. The 100 on the left indicates the position that you are percentage-wise along the path. It's the second number that determines just how far in degrees you've twisted that around by the time that you get to the end of the path. Double-click in the box, then change the number to minus 2500, then press Enter. OK, you can go ahead and close that up. So take a look at that. The nested star is now twisting 2500 degrees around from the front of the path back to the back. Over in the Deformation section in the right-hand column, you can always turn the effect on and off. Right above Twist, go ahead and click on Scale. In this option box, you have control over the size of the nested shape as it travels from the front to the back of the path. Again, if you look at the values over on the left-hand side, you'll see right now the red line is lined up with 100%. In essence, meaning that the nested star is right now staying at 100% of its full size from front to back. Let's go ahead and change that. Again, we'll click on the black dot on the right-hand side of the red line. Once it's been selected, and it'll turn white when it is, let's drag that down to the heavy black line, but not below it. This is going to change the size of our nested star as it gets toward the back of the path. The top of the helix, in other words. Now take a look at that. The lofted shape is not just twisting, but also changing size as it travels up the helical path. If you roll your wheel and orbit in, you'll see the top of the path is indeed still that same nested star. Now, these deformation settings can even be animated. 
Let's have a little fun with that. We'll first go back in and open up the scale settings. Now in my dialog, I see that the size of the line at the back of the path is down to 6%. I'm going to take that back to its full 100 original setting. Now down below the timeline, I'll activate the Auto key. You can also use the keyboard shortcut N for that. OK, at frame 1, we're going to leave the scale value of our nested star at 100. Let's now take our timeline back to the end of our animation to frame 100. You can do that by moving the slider or simply tapping the END key on your keyboard. Now in place, let's take the scale value of that nested star at the back of the path to 10%. Close the dialog and scrub the timeline to see what you've done. Let's also see if we can't animate the twist value. Back on the right, under Deformations, open up the twist. From here, let's go back to our first frame, changing the twist value back to zero. That'll be on the control that adjusts the number of times the shape is spun around. With that right hand value at the bottom set to zero at frame zero, we can now move to frame 100 on our timeline. Here, we'll adjust the twist value from negative 2500 to 500. Once you've done that, go ahead and close the dialog and play back your timeline. So a bunch of different stuff that you can do with the loft, and a bunch of different things that you can make. Curved table legs, handrails, maybe a neon sign for the wall. That's the loft. Take the time to learn how it works and you'll have a powerful command in your modeling toolbox. I'll save this file out as Animated Loft Completed if you'd like to look it over.